and welcome to Labour Lens. I am Sharon Ijasson. On this week's edition of the program, we'll be discussing about child labour and the several challenges an average African child is faced with. One of the worst forms of child labour is child prostitution. We'll be discussing all about this and possibly preferring solution to the vice in the country. We will be right back. With the growing trend of downsizing of workers, reduction of salaries and refusal to negotiate or implement the new minimum wage by state governors, the acting president of the Association of Senior Civil Servants of Nigeria, Tommy Etim Okon, says the union will not support promotion of indecent work. He was reacting to the announcement by Kayode Fayemi, the governor of Ekiti State and the chairman of Nigeria Governors Forum, that there will be suspension of the consequential salary adjustment of minimum wage and a cut in salaries of workers in the state. The union leaders say it is an insensitive move looking at the economic situation in the country. Salaries are no longer to be negotiated though, because minimum wage is law and you don't negotiate. Do they negotiate the law there? No. no. Why you just pay? Tell us when you are capable to pay. If you want to ensure industrial peace and harmony, please don't renege on agreement rich. Because the moment you do that, you have open window for industrial crisis. Suppose Nigerian workers are not civilized. They add industrial crisis to insecurity. Banditry. To banditry. Document released by the union shows that out of 36 states in the country, nine are yet to either negotiate nor implement the new minimum wage. They are Anambra, Bauchi, Benue, Kebi, Kogi, Imo, Nasarawa, Taraba, and Zamfara State. While Ekiti and Kano State commenced negotiations, implemented it but reduced workers' salaries. The union leadership also urged government and relevant stakeholders to reinstate payment of gratuity to civil servants in the country. Sharon Jasson, TVC News. Members of the Dock Workers Branch of the Maritime Workers Union of Nigeria has re-elected Ibrahim Ohize as president of the branch for another four years. Also, Comrade Ifa Imazidi was re-elected to serve as President's Nigerian Post Authority at the 5th Quadrennial Delegates Conference of the branch in Lagos. Senior package for Talikia and Ombo security men. Four, creating of new districts. Five, Enforcing the returning company to provide PPE and other amenities for dog workers. Five, scientific, scientific approach in conflict resolution. The well-being of the dog worker is our utmost priority and second to none. We will always work with, to synthesize and educate the workers to meet up international standards. Nigerian Port Authority employees called on the management of the authority to increase their salaries, which has been stagnated for the past 17 years. Comrades, the numerical strength of our members are dwindling every day. This is as a result of promotion, retirement, and debt, which is a natural phenomenon. We wish to use this opportunity to once again appeal to management to employ more junior workers, to boost the workforce. As a matter of fact, there are hundreds of private jetties operating in the country, and yet the presence of the Nigerian Post Authority are not there. There is need to reverse the trend for obvious reasons. President General of the Maritime Workers Union during the delegates' conference emphasized the need for operators in the port to accept and work with the Nigerian law on expatriate quota on local content that allows eligible, qualified Nigerians to work and ensure that NMASA provides biometric identity cards for dock workers. We call on the federal government through the Nigeria Port Authority, Nigeria Spark Council, and the Federal Ministry of Transportation 
bullying for public enterprises and so on and so forth to consider increasing tariff due to terminal operators, which has been stagnated since the concerns of the ports. We believe doing this will boost their financial capacity to enable them to fulfill their financial obligations to our members and to the government. The union called on federal government to upgrade facilities of all maritime institutes. Exactly two years ago, the light dimmed on one of the shining stars in the Nigerian labor movement. Then Pengasan President Francis Johnson died on the 31st of May 2019 in Abuja. This gathering for an inaugural public lecture to kick off a foundation in his honor brings back memories of the pain brought about by his sudden death. In line with the theme of the memorial lecture, speakers say quality leadership remains a huge challenge in Nigeria. They say the culture of servant leadership exhibited by the late FOJ is all that is needed to strengthen the nation's crooked path. Few in this audience are indeed around the country will disagree with one of our iconic literal, literal gi giants, the late Chino Achebe, when he famously said in one of his books that the problem with Nigeria is squarely that of leadership. We need to focus very, very seriously on grooming our leaders right from the beginning. At kindergarten age, I think we should try to start instilling that kind of uh, uh, leadership uh, traits in our children. The oil and gas industry and the entire nation will surely continue to miss uh, FOJ. As we all know today, the global oil and gas industry is going through complex transitions that require our collective resilience to survive. For his wife of 18 years, life has been turbulent without him. She is grateful for the support given her and her children so far. It has not been so easy without FOJ, my husband. I missed him a lot. I'm seeing favor from left and right, especially the friends of FOJ. Whenever I want to keep calm, I want to keep to myself. They are always there. Say, no, madam, come out. We are with you. Those guys, they can pass almost 15, 16, 17. Even those guys, they are, they are age, can still need to do for you. King Ben Ojin Sexual activity is often seen as a private matter, making communities reluctant to act or intervene in cases of sexual exploitation. These attitudes make children more vulnerable to sexual exploitation. For months, I have been investigating how underage children operate as sex workers across the three major geopolitical zones in Nigeria. Here is what I found. In Lagos and Abuja, underage sex workers rarely ply their trade in brothels or hotels. Rather, they operate from their homes or hostels. The only exception is in slum areas. But in some parts of northern Nigeria, most of the underage girls who engage in it hang around brothels, hotels, and clubs. In Loring, North Central Nigeria, underage girls are found in hotels, brothels, and hostels, apartments, and clubs. It follows a similar pattern in Southeast Nigeria, particularly in the state. There, they are found in clubs, hotels, 
Drofels, Strippers Club, among others. Those guys, they can pass all those 15, 16, 17 with my uh, last one. They are age Yes, they are age Even those guys, they are, they are age, you can see little big boys. Hmm. And two, the two guys, very fine guys. So city gates, even not from the all this area, that is that is what they are doing here. Even the one they are grown up, all the young ladies, they are, they are the in, the, in the main road in the city. That's the feel of how societies seem to be silent on the issue of confronting the vice of children selling their body in return for cash. Tokbel Asisi, not a real name, is one of them. She is only 17 and has been in the sex trade for about five years now and met the mother of a two-year-old boy in Lagos. When she is not going to meet her client in Brussels, this is where she brings them. The dimly lit wooden shack is packed with condoms, cigarette, Risla, weed and a small bed. That's all she needs for a daily bustle, which she shares with a friend. Just three. In Kaduna State, Northwest Nigeria, I met another 17 year old Zainab Aksum, not a real name. She says she's been a sex worker for more than five years now after she dropped out of school. She cheerfully tells me she was a bright student and won several competitions when she was in school. She says she would love to go back. <laughs> I only want to go back to school. That's my own. Because even though it's a country school, I had a competition. The government was. Uh, we saw men at first. We can't put it in the national school. In the popular community where she lived, named Romain, in the outskirts of Kaduna, Many of the girls go to the city to operate. With their dreams shattered, many say they are doing this to survive. They often charge between 3,000 naira and 7,000 naira, which is approximately between $7 and $15 for their service. This is slightly higher compared to their counterparts in Lagos, who barely earn 2,000 naira per night. That's about $5. At this club named Empire, located at High Cross Kaduna, these young men are placing their orders of underage girls of their choice right from their phones where the girls' pictures are displayed from websites. After making their choice, the girls are then contracted for a meetup. <laughs> The underage sex trade is increasingly going digital in Nigeria, attracting more young people to it in the process. 
you have parents who are not gainfully employed, they have children, they have to take care of. So the challenges are uh, enormous. And of course, there is also the issue of exploitation. Some people would want to use children just because it is cheaper to use children. They will not express any right or demand any right. So the idea of exploiting them, and that is the category that you can even classify child prostitution. Sometimes these children who are engaged in child prostitution, it is the kingpins, they even collect the money. They don't give the money to them. They, they don't engage the customers directly. There are other people that engage the customers and then on the day they decide to give the children how much they think is due them. So there are people who are also out there trying to take advantage of the vulnerability of children to be able to exploit them, to also be able to make money. Although there is no particular law in Nigeria that prohibits child prostitution, the Sexual Offences Act in Section 7 of the Nigerian Constitution states that a person caught in an act which causes penetration with a child is guilty of a crime called defilement. In Imo State, southeastern Nigeria, underage sex workers are in hot demand. At this popular brothel named Timaya, there are many of them here and it is the main reason why many of the so-called city big boys patronize the place. We get bonanza, okay, if you are ready, the girls, they, then they're ready for you. Like I can see the matter big. We have black, we have apple breast, we have, you know, cucumber breast, we have, you know, bottle breast. But for you, yeah, what you appreciate here is apple breast. None of these girls, like, none of you get, you know, bottle breast. Once demolished in 2015, they have now split into four operating in four major parts in the state, namely Obinze by Futo Road, Avu, Irete, and World Bank Road. The, there, are, there have been a lot of challenges in the area of reporting of prevalence of child abuse in our society. So we realize that there's the need to train these, these critical stakeholders. So we organize a reporting uh, workshop and we develop the template to educate the stakeholders, our labor officers in the, uh, in the, in the 37 state offices. When, while they are going on inspection, they should be working towards ensuring that we are, wherever they detect infraction of you know, child labor, they should be reporting it and they have been doing that. A research conducted by Women Consortium of Nigeria in the period of 2014 to 2018 revealed that between April 2017 and September 2017, the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Person NAPTIC received five cases of recruitment of child for the purpose of prostitution. Unfortunately, none was fully investigated. Child rights advocates are now pushing for the creation of the National Child Protection and Enforcement Agency to check the rapidly growing child sex trade. But stories like that of Tokba Lassisi and Zainab Aksan clearly show that issues of underage sex trade in Nigeria are steeped in poverty and broken family values. Unfortunately, with no societal support system, the victims are simply not able to rise above these problems. profile interview segment this week, I will be speaking with the Deputy National President of Trade Union Congress of Nigeria, Comrade Owen Consular Ola Songye. She tells me there is a need to promote child rights policies and also the provision of decent work for adults can further reduce the spread of the vice of child prostitution in Nigeria and in Africa. Thank you very much for joining us on the program. Thank you. You are welcome. What's your view about child labor in Nigeria as um, the country is yet to eradicate this trend? We have various policy, various acts in Nigeria that uh, act as a sort of uh, policy to prevent uh, child labor. Act. But, the uh, uh, but the unfortunate thing is this. 
we, the policies are so many that they are not coordinated and there is no necessary enforcement put in place. So definitely is a very sore point that keep on reoccurring. It's something we have not been eradicated despite that a lot of things have been put in place to eradicate it. Would you say that there are enough policy in the country to tackle this vice? Yes, we have a lot of policies. Almost all convention, ILO convention on child labor uh, or child rights has been, uh, uh, has been uh, ratified by Nigeria and most African countries. Uh, it, will, it will be of note that uh, one of the conventions that all nations ratify is Convention 168 that talks about child rights. So definitely uh, we have enough. It is the implementation and the enforcement that is the problem. So what do you think can be done in terms of implementation? Uh, let me give you an example. We have a Child Educational Act. We have Child Rights Act. And uh, we have um, the high ELO convention that eradicates uh, uh, forced labor. Now, we in, in the Educational Act, every Nigerian children is entitled to education, public education, free, that means free education, up to GSS, up to their 15 years of age. Nothing has been done about that. Now we have this uh, Nigerian uh, Child Right Act, right Act that speaks about um, that they shouldn't be allowed to work in any hazardous area, but nothing was used to define what makes a job hazardous. Uh, unfortunately, the Nigerian uh, Labor Act specifies that a child that is 12 years old can work. Why the the Act, the Child Rights Act, specify that they must be 18 before they work. Though there has never been any coordination among these two policies. So when you want to accuse somebody of uh, making uh, somebody that is of young, a young worker to work, which of this law will define who is a young worker? Is it the Nigerian Labor Act that says from age 12? Or is it the right that says from age 18? So th the problem we have is that one, there is no coordination. We lack coordination of policies, different policies. Then when it comes to, like for example, we put it in the, in the right that uh, they can't, no child can be allowed to work in any military setup. But we did not put it in a situation because the way we define military setup, we define it based on states. That is Federal Republic of Nigerian military, Federal Republic of Nigerian police, uh, but we did not define it to the extent of private police. So it means that Nigerian youth can be used as, um, as youth military officers. Uh, don't let me use the word military, sorry. As somebody that can be used as a child soldier. Because the law that, that we put in place only talk that they can't be used by the military forces in Nigeria and police force. But did not say they can't be used for Boko Haram. Did not say they cannot be used by maybe Odua People's Congress or, or Hamese or Arewa Youth. So it means we are giving private institutions power that they can still use. So if you look at all the rights, we have all the necessary things put in place. But the way we coordinated them, the way we, we, we enforced them, did not give the biting teeth, the necessary enforcement into it. So we have the laws, is the enforcement that I believe is not adequate enough. How would you rate the ratification campaign of Convention 182 in Nigeria and Africa? Are there sanctions? And do you think that um, people who really perpetrate this evil see it as a criminal offense? Uh, we thank God that Nigeria really ratified that convention. But when it comes to implementation and enforcement, we are way below. For example, uh, throughout uh, 2017, Nigerian government through the Federal Ministry of Labor, we are able to uh, only pick less than 5,000 Nigerian youths that are suffering from working in such conditions. But you know, from the population of Nigeria, the, most of our population, at least 65% of our population is made of youth. And we all know the reality on ground. So you realize that the inspectors are not enough. And they don't have enough tools and equipment to be able to monitor. Uh, if we are waiting for people to come and notify us when they are suffering through 
uh, as a drug job, it will not be easy because most of, most of the time, because of poverty, people voluntarily go into all these factories that they needed work. So they may not even know they are right. And uh, we don't have enough data in Nigeria with which even the inspectors can work with. Because most of the factories that are being registered, uh, most of the time, nobody, nobody visited all these factories. So what they normally do is that when you are registering someone, it's just like opening bank accounts. They expect you to bring a utility bill so that they will be able to know that there is an area like that that exists. But who says that you can't just get any utility bill and bring it there? So when it comes to implementation, when it comes to enforcement, we have the necessary convention, but we are not implementing enough because we don't... We, we, uh, for example, sexual workers, most of them are inside buildings that are not registered as brothels or hotels. So how will somebody be there to monitor or to enforce such law there? So until we have the necessary data, and all of us, all Nigerians, decide now this for, for once to implement together, that we don't necessarily wait for Ministry of Labor. Apart from Ministry of Labor, the law specify that a Nigerian police force, uh, then the, there is a body set up against uh, trafficking and child labor. So there are almost about four institutions that are to monitor. So at times we become confused that we are the ones uh, um, right hands and where did this stop? Who do you report such a situation to? When it comes to companies, organizations, factories, you have to report to Ministry of Labor. When it comes to sexual workers, trafficking, you, rep you report to nothing. But how many people know where they are? and who, how to, to get across to them. So there is still a sort of coordination of the principles, uh, the institutions, and the right, that is, and the policy. That is where we'll be able to move forward better. Thank you very much for joining us on the program. And that's all we can take on this edition of the program. Join us next week for a fresh edition of the show. I am Sharon Ijasson. Thanks for watching, and remember, labor creates wealth. <laughs>